G'day guys, welcome back to another edition of Just The Tips. I'm joined once again by young Druzy, who is killing it in the footy tipping game. Druzy, how's it feel to be top four in the competition? A name Druzy. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, it feels fucking good, eh? Obviously, I've always thought I was bad at knowing football, and just to shit all over you with all your analytics and that, and I'm just like... Sick, bro. I'll choose Frio. If I finish top five, you've got to get a tattoo. Fine. Nice! So we'll take a look at what the rankings actually are. I have 26 correct tips for the year, the margin of 132, which places me at 318. I'm feeling a little bit stiff here and not really in a good way, to be honest. 318, I am actually getting better at tipping every week, but the competition's actually getting larger. So oh, I'm getting better every week. Yeah, well, that's not hard. But yeah, obviously more people are joining every week, so my ranking's not going up, unfortunately. So I sit at 318, but you are doing extremely well with 34 correct tips. A margin of 113, and as I said, you're in the top four, which is ridiculous. Let's go. Dad Watch, uh, he's doing pretty well as well, 31. Uh, I think he's 73rd in the competition right now. Um, so, yeah, like I said, as long as Dad's higher than me, I'm going to keep hearing it. So that's my battle for the rest of the year. I need to get up five tips on my dad. Nice. Gross. We will shout out the winners of the round, as we always do. And this week, it goes to young Zach Bertossa and boy, does he. He, he tipped nine correct tips. Uh, I think there was only a few people who did that, which means he tips GWS correctly yeah. as well, um, which is outstanding tipping. Margin of 55, because Richmond kind of blew St. Kilda out of the water. Not many people would have tipped 86 points as mm -hmm. the margin. So congratulations, Zach. The leader of the competition, however, is someone called ESPN Fan 926832. There's more numbers, but I can't actually see it on my phone. Uh, you know who you are. Uh, I would recommend changing your username so you get a proper shout out, because uh, I I think it defaults as ESPN yeah. fan. Uh, but either way, 36 correct tips with a margin of 125. Two ahead of you, Druzy. So, uh, yeah, he's doing really, really well. Congrats. I'm coming for you, ESPN fan. 36793792236. And the fantasy leader, back-to-back, uh, -back, you gonna cry. Sean Carr is uh, sitting at the top of the competition with an average of one uh, 1,984. And uh, for context, I think I got 1,860 this week, which nice. is my best score, but that's still really bad. So um, I gotta start trying to get, you know, 2,000 every week if I'm gonna have a chance. Before we get into the actual tips i do want to shout out two important things for you guys to know we did record a cold world podcast it is out right now so go check it out on the cold world youtube channel link in the description if you don't know it's the podcast i do with my roommate dylan Druzy was a guest a couple of weeks back as well um so yeah just a little side thing i've got going at the moment i really appreciate you checking it out and also check out the sponsors of today's video manscape.com you can get 20 percent off and free shipping on their male grooming products as Druzy is so ably demonstrating there um you get a really good bargain with their products uh, they make great products and they also do us a big favor by keeping the show ticking along if your pubes are gross go to manscaped so let's get into round six drews we start off with uh what some people say is the biggest rivalry in footy uh deal buckley's big on this because he played at gws and he's been part of you know and carlton obviously and he's been part of the big rivalries that you know you're calling oh you're carlton essendon's you're carlton collingwoods but apparently gws giants and the bulldogs absolutely hate each other so be interesting to see if there's a bit of life in this contest gws have won two in a row kind of revived their season a little bit last week yes, was sir. fantastic callan ward uh, Green, Hopper and Taranto are really good in the middle and that arguably won in the game uh, and they're playing a good brand of footy. On the other side of the ledger, the Dogs are 5-0 for the first time since 1946. So wow. they've actually won a premiership more recently than they've started a season 5-0. So That's crazy. we're seeing a Dogs team that we haven't seen before um, in terms of quality. The Stars are all firing. McRae's been great. No one's been better than the Bont and they're also destroying teams for percentage which is going to hold them in really good stead. Dogs appear to be the team to beat. Can the Giants go 3-3 three from three here with a surprise win at home? No. Bulldogs are too hot at the moment. I've been very impressed, impressed, impressed by Dunkley as well in that mm. midfield. He's sort of been like the outsider, the one that was sort of going to get traded away to Essendon and then Trollor will just fit in nicely. But he's, that, he's made his case and I like him a lot. Yeah, Bulldogs are the best side in the AFL at the moment. I reckon they'll go to GWS, have a bit of a punch on and just dick him up and win this game by... 26 points. I'm going to side with you here as well. Uh, do you tend to agree? I do tend to agree. I'm copping that one a lot as well. <laughs> yeah, Monica Oval, so it's Canberra, um, where the Giants are obviously a bit more familiar with. Nonetheless, Dogs are probably too tough a team to beat. I'm going to say they're going to win this by 22 points. Roof, roof. Second game of the round is Geelong versus the West Coast Eagles on Saturday morning at GMHBA Stadium. Uh, this is famously a terrible fixture for the Eagles. We've mm. only won one game there since 1999 uh, when we had the amazing comeback win uh, by 54 points and I'll never forget that game and uh, yeah it is the only time we've beaten them pretty much since I've been watching footy so on the Geelong side of the ledger still looking a little unconvincing stinky yeah a bit of medi mediocrity uh, stanking out of GMHBA Stadium at the moment I think one thing that's going to be an issue for them is their ruck sort of situation mm -hmm. Reece Stanley had 8 hit outs last week <laughs> um, against North Melbourne yeah well, are you got, taking the piss they got Goldstein and Campbell 
there. So yeah, it's it's a real concern for him. On the plus side, Dangerfield, uh, he came back. I think he copped a bit of an injury, but I think he should be all right. Uh, and Jeremy Cameron's going to be returning this week as well, okay. which is just great timing for the Eagles. <laughs> the Eagles beat up on an okay Collingwood side. I don't really sort of like buy into the fact that they're absolute trash. I think they put up a reasonable contest and got undone by some injuries. Um, and the, on the plus side, Witherden came in for his club debut, had 30 touches, and we didn't really miss Shannon Hearn at all. So um, positive signs for the Eagles last week. Considering the Eagles have only won once there in 23 years... Can they do it this week against the Cats? Dry spells are made to be broken, Jesse. I reckon the Eagles get it done. I reckon they go down to GMHBA. They have a much better team camaraderie from the outside looking in. Basically, I think the Eagles play better as a unit than Geelong do. Um, It is a tough fixture to win away from home. But, as I said, it's got to happen at some point. Geelong have looked actually shit. Like, every team has steamrolled North Melbourne, except for Geelong, just about. Even though they ran away with it in the end, they looked woeful. Couldn't kick straight. Eagles are the best set shot side in the comp just about and with Alex Witherden stepping up they're going to have a stacked back line ready for that uh, great forward line in Geelong I reckon the Eagles get this done by 27 points if we're ever going to beat Geelong this is the time to do it this mm-hmm. is the stars aligning uh, you might say with the momentum uh, we've kind of got back and then also how Geelong look mediocre I tend to agree this could be the game that we beat them. I'm going to tip Geelong by 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no, in all seriousness, no chance. I'd give the Eagles very little chance here. I uh, we Hoodoos uh, tend to sort of matter a little bit for some reason, and we just, we're just just trash at that ground. I just don't have any faith this week. Is your head telling you? I think that we, I think we're a chance to win more so than we have been in the, any of the last 10 times we've gone there, yeah. probably. But, uh, yeah, no, nah, I just don't see it. I know, like... Last week when the Dockers were playing Adelaide, we went in as the underdogs. But I was like, I back Frio, I back our system. Adelaide are playing all right, but I think we're a better side. I think you're a better side than Geelong at the moment. And I think your system has been working better in the new rules and whatnot. Eagles will get it done. Eagles will get it done. I, I agree that we would be ranked higher on like form ratings. We have played a better brand of footy so far this year. But we love playing teams into form. So uh, Geelong are back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have the Gold Coast Suns versus the Sydney Swans at Metricon Stadium. The Suns had a shocker last week against the Dogs. We were streaming the opposite game, uh, Sydney versus GWS at the time. So we didn't catch it, but they only kicked their first goal in the 30 seconds prior to half time, And the Dogs butchered them. I think they kicked seven in the next eight, but the game's pretty much done. So mm. Gold Coast starting to look a little bit tired. Um, young, young teams do this, but they really can't let this become a trend. And Sydney, sort of similarly, are a young side that, uh, you know, the young side, the young players are not really performing to the same standard they were in the first month. Buddy Franklin's now out for a month as well, um, confirmed on Instagram. But I will say for the Swans, if not for just some lax defending in that last well, uh, minute or whatever it was, they gone Josh Kelly, they should have killed that contest. Mm-hmm. Um, they, if they had, like, done that, they would be 5-0 and and be talking them up. There's no chance to lose this. So what are your thoughts on this game? I think you just summed it up quite nicely, yeah. Other than one blip in the radar against GWS, who have looked back to... That the form that we know they can play at. I reckon, yeah, Sydney are still up there or thereabouts. They'll probably fizzle out eventually, but G- Gold Coast haven't shown me anything. I've really been watching their games, but their results have just been shit. So I'm just going to tip the Swans here. The Suns have had some honourable losses. I think they played well against the Eagles in Perth. I think they played well against Adelaide in Adelaide, uh, but it hasn't translated in results. This is a winnable game to some extent, but I think Sydney are too good. They're going to win this by, yeah, four goals. Yeah, I think 18 points. Next up, we have the Blues hosting uh, Brisbane at Marvel Stadium, and uh, it's been a season of empty promises for the Blues, and they're getting it, they're copying it hard, uh, both from their fans on YouTube as well. There's a great, few great um, you know Carlton fan channels mm. out there, but Damien Barrett sort of laid into them as well this morning, and uh, yeah, not not delivering on the promise that they had. Also, they've got the Dons, Dogs, and Ds after this. So it's almost season on the line. Triple Ds, baby. Yeah, exactly. On the Brisbane side of it, uh, Danaher has slipped into that team and performing quite well. Almost like, like a second ruck now as yeah. well. He kind of came in as a forward, but um, uh, it's good to see him sort of find a little niche in that team. And then Lockie Neal got off the chain. I think you called that last week, that actually. Was Busher. Oh, it was Busher. Okay, he had 38 touches and two goals. Sorry, you guys look exactly the same. Although the Lions look better last week, uh, they're almost kind of playing for their season week to week because they can't yeah. really afford to drop too many more games. I do recall a 2019 clash between these two sides where Carlton had their backs against the wall. Paddy Cripps was out of form and he blew him out of the water with four goals and nearly 40 touches. Yeah. Can they achieve a similar upset result in this nah. game? Nah. Okay. Nah. Never mind. Carlton are still in an early stage of their development. Like, obviously, they're such a big club so they've always got so many high expectations. But realistically, they're in that 10th to 14th range still, unfortunately. To get pumped by Port and for Damien Barrett to say, like, oh, they're not... They're not delivering 
delivering on their promises. They're probably at where they are. You're going to get pumped by those bigger teams. Brisbane are one of those teams. Back Brisbane, but, you know, if Carlton are as hyped as every one of their fans think they are, could be a potential for an upset, but I think Brisbane will win this comfortably by 31 points. Yeah, I think there's a lot of internal optimism from Carlton fans, and that's mm. where, you know, the perception that they're coming is is sort of there. I tend to agree. I think the Lions have too much to play for. Uh, they're a better side than they showed in the first, uh, you know, few weeks of the year. They're going to get this done by, I'll say, 20 points. Next up, we have one of the most highly anticipated games of the round. You've got the undefeated Demons taking on the reigning premiers at the MCG on Anzac Day Eve. This is actually the first time the Ds have uh, been undefeated after five rounds. Um, I think since the mid-90s, because they said that Jack Viney was like 17 days old, which is 1994. Yeah, right. Head. So, um, yeah, no, it's been a long time coming, similar to the Dogs. Um, and they've had some really good contributors this year, as we've talked about. Don't need to go in-depth, but we talked about Max Gorn, Petrarca, and someone uh, that's getting a little recognition now, Trent Rivers from, uh, from yeah. uh, East Fremantle Way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, really, really good shout for a potential All-Australian, uh, like, squad of 40, I reckon, at yeah. the end of the year. Brown and Wiedemann might be ins or available this week. Kick um, 10 in the VFL between them. Let's look at the Tigers. They butchered the Saints. Not the toughest game, but 86 points is uh, clinical. <laughs> not a bad win. <laughs> yeah, no, like, you can't fault Richmond at all for that. Dusty had 34 and a goal. Shane Edwards had 29 and was also really strong. So, we know what Richmond are. Given the fact that the Tigers won the last five between these two, is this oh, the game, do you reckon, that Melbourne finally notched one up on the reigning premiers? Oh, I love the Ds. I genuinely love the Ds. I love their list. Love all their players, and I'll be rooting very hard for them in this game. Gross. <laughs> you can't look past Richmond. You cannot look past Richmond. They are the best side of the last decade. I say it every fucking week, but they are literally just so class. Like every line, they they show up every week. They perform. This is a great shot for Melbourne to really put their balls in the top four and say, "I'm here." Slam the door shut. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tip Richmond by 23 points. But I, I'm going to watch this game with a lot of intent. I'm going to be looking at Melbourne very closely. It'll be a good measuring stick to see where they're at as a as a list and as a club. So, yeah, I'll tip Richmond. Yeah, I, th I think to say this is a like a test game for Melbourne is um, yeah is apt. I, I like Melbourne. I see the optimism. They, uh, they have plenty to like. And like I said, they've not dropped games where other teams might have. So I do rate them. But I feel like there's a sense of Richmond's going to put them back in their box a little yeah. bit this week and show them what the real measuring stick is. And maybe... Mm -hmm. Maybe Melbourne's better for that contest. Yeah. I think sometimes that happens. Your team, you sort of come up against the best. You get belted, then the next time you're better for it. I, I feel like, I don't think they'll get belted. I'll say maybe 33 points yeah. Richmond's way. But uh, yeah, that's where my head's at. Next up, this is uh, probably going to be the biggest blockbuster of the round. I reckon it'll sell out Optus. Ah, uh, Fremantle versus North Melbourne. How many people do you reckon would go to this game, considering we're at full capacity now? 30,000. Nice. Okay, that sucks. The Dockers, though, do have reason to show up and support their team because they had a very good win on the road against Adelaide last week when uh, I personally didn't see it, and uh, and you did, so credit to you. I did tip Adelaide on just the tips, and you then yep. changed my tip to good the point. Dockers. Yeah, no, no, and you, I could tell on just the tips you didn't want to tip Adelaide, but yeah. you ended up doing it, uh, and then you switched. So, um, But we've talked about it on the Drew Footy Show. Go check that out. Uh, Monday, for me close to top five mid for the season so far. Mm -hmm. uh, Brayshaw could be your BNF at the end of the year as well. He's yeah. putting in a really good performance. Chera's injured. Uh, I think he might miss a little bit, but... I, I don't think, mind that. That's yeah, right. exactly. Um, and it, nonetheless, it was a mature win on the road. On the other side of the ledger, we have North, who went to GMHBA, who, which is ordinarily the toughest trip in footy. Um, they didn't play like it was the toughest trip in footy. They, yeah. I think they made a good account of themselves. Their pressure was good. They were pretty clinical in the front half, in this, particularly at the start of the game. <laughs> Everyone's talking about how sure shit North are. I, I do think eventually they're going to just bob up and beat someone. Yeah. I, I definitely think. Don't you say it's going to be against no, Frio. I'll smack you silly. I don't think it'll be against Frio, but it would be a very Frio result to, to win away and then lose at home. Not these I, days. Not these days. I was just going to... The next question I was going to ask is how confident you are. I'm guessing you are very confident. I'll chop my dick off if Frio lose this game. Yeah, no, Frio are looking good and we're a very hard side to beat at home. I'd really like to see some of the, the more quiet players like your Josh Tracy's lift in this game. Mm. Um, I want to see a big performance from Brendan Cox out of the back half. Just put some respect on David Money's name. Dockers are improving, so just keep an eye out for them and they'll win this game, but no one's going to watch it anyway. It's hard to see how North win this game unless Fremantle just don't show up. Fremantle by 54 points, actually. Oh, I don't think we can kick that straight, but that could be <laughs> nice. We usually kick double the amount of points as we kick goals, so I'll say Dockers just make it an absolute mission for themselves and then run away with it 38 points. Nice. Next up, we take a little journey south, Jersey, as Hawthorne take on Adelaide at UTAS Stadium uh, down in Tasmania. Hawks were good for three terms last week against the Ds, uh, and then were absolutely...
absolutely shit house at the end. I think we've shown from seen from the Hawks that their best is okay, yeah. and their worst is pretty trash. Like <laughs> getting butchered in the half by Essendon, they were okay against Fremantle, but yeah. you know, like, haven't really hit a gear that's been very impressive this year. And they look a fair way off the final contenders. Mitchell and O'Meara were good in the midfield, um, mm-hmm. and they're starting to find plenty of the ball. But overall, I think they'll be pretty disappointed with that result. Adelaide beaten by um, a, a Freo side that put in a very level and mature performance, something that maybe they blacked over the last few years, but they were just too good. I was confidently watching. Had it on in the background, but every time I was looking, I was like, free managers look like the best yeah. side here. Um, and we saw that when Tex sort of went off with a little niggle, um, Adelaide's scoring options dried up, and that, yeah. that's going to be a real sort of Achilles heel for them. Tasmania is a hard one to judge here. Who are you thinking? I find this hard to tip. Yeah, I think Hawthorne. I've actually been pretty impressed with Hawthorne from what I've seen. Like, Melbourne, top of the top of the table, took it up for, to them for three quarters, ran out of legs in the end, so maybe they're a bit fatigued as well. But again, against Frio, they had their backs against the wall. They come back, they brought it back a little bit. Big win against Essendon, even though they had a shit first half. Um, so yeah, I've, I've seen signs of positivity for the Hawks. Adelaide going down to Tasmania, that's a, that's the number one trip I hate to play is Hawthorne in Tasmania. Mm. It's always been so hard, especially throughout all those dominant years of Hawthorne. I reckon Adelaide are going to be continuing on a downward trajectory from now on, and I think Hawthorne will just get it done because they really need a result. Uh, I'll tip Hawthorne by 29 points. I will probably feel similarly. Um, the Tasmania factor is hard. I don't know what their like record is there, Hawks, especially when they've sort of been rebuilding, but yeah. I similarly don't like trips down to Tasmania. I'm going to tip the Hawks. Uh, I think the Crows have run out of steam, whether or not that's for the whole season or just for this next little period. Um, yeah, Adelaide not convincing last week. So Hawthorne will get this done by 14 points. Next up, we have the big Anzac Day clash. Um, one I'm pretty looking forward to, to be yeah. honest. There's been a bit of a gap between these two teams over recent years, and I think that start, they're starting to meet in a little bit, uh, not in a good way, because they both kind of suck. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but either way, I, I think in the atmosphere that we're potentially going to have, um, I, I'm really looking forward to it. Collingwood obviously went down to the Eagles, having some forward line issues to go. He's going to miss with uh, with concussion, I believe. Um, they tried Grundy forward. They tried uh, Darcy, Darcy Moore. Moore forward. Kick five goals between them. Personally, don't know if Grundy's sustainable forward. Worth trying, but I think he kind of... There was a bit of luck involved in his two goals, um, where uh, whereas more sort of like led up of the ball and looked more of a natural forward to me. Mm-hmm. There's no how... Uh, Dugowie, um is obviously out and Majacek uh, had a bit of a stinger I think he might be alright Dons they uh, they got butchered in the contest completely beat up in the contest of ball stakes in a wet and drizzly night at the Gabba tough contest though because I think the Lions are a decent wet weather side um, it's a tough trip up there but mm. the Dons really didn't put up too much of a yelp so it was a reality check but a tough gig their form has been up and down season's probably on the line for the loser yep. I'd have to say like I wouldn't have these two teams in my eight at the moment but uh, you'd have to think the loser's going to be a real stinky chance. Yeah. Uh, what are you vibing out of this game? I'm vibing Mason Cox to come in and have a big game here. Collingwood need goals, and obviously he's just such a frustrating player, but he's been big on Anzac Day before. He's a big game player, to be honest. Yeah, he, he, he does show up. I feel like this is one where he could come in and really make a difference. Um, I reckon Collingwood will win. Essendon haven't really shown me much to, to be impressed with other than that win over St Kilda, but mm. no one knows with Essendon at the moment. So just due to that uncertainty and just the class that Collingwood have, I think Collingwood will just get the job done. And in front of such a big crowd as well, that'll give them, hopefully, a bit of momentum, a bit of confidence heading on with the season because they really need to get the wheels rolling. I agree with that. I think uh, I think I'm just a little bit more confident in Collingwood showing up. But yeah. if Essendon show up, I reckon they could easily butcher yeah. them. Um, so that's a tough one with Essendon. But I, I'm going to say conservative tip: Collingwood will win this by like 17 points. I don't think it'll be an easy win because of their injuries, but they'll get the job done. Final game of the round: Port Adelaide is taking on St Kilda at Adelaide Oval. Uh, we saw Port Adelaide get the job done over Carlton fairly easily at the yeah. MCG, which I think is a, a nice little tick because you only get a few MCG games as an inter- interstate club. Um, so to bank the wins now and potentially you know have some finals there later in the year, I think that's yeah. a, a good result for the power who showed they don't have any fears there. Aliyah Aliyah, maybe AA, which would add two A's to what is already two A's. A, A, A. A, A for A, A. Um, kept Mackay to five touches and a goal, and Mackay's had some really big games yeah. this year, so always a tough contest that. Saints season, already in jeopardy. Yeah. Two and three, 74%. Oh, 71%, sorry. Um, which, you know, is going to hurt them if they're pushing for that top eight spot. Such a shame. <laughs> Such a shame. Are you rubbing your nipples? The Saints did beat the power in Adelaide last year in a game no one tipped before because the power obviously were the best team through the home and away yeah. season last year. Uh, always kept top spot throughout the year. The Saints responded once after a bad loss. Can they do it again here? Yeah. Not in Adelaide, I don't reckon. Port are 
Yeah, they're looking probably second best after the Bulldogs, I'd say. Yeah. Is Rowan Marshall going to be back in? Do you know? I actually don't know, to be honest. Not sure. Yeah. That'll play a big factor. It but will. I really like the power. They're playing really good footy. St. Kilda aren't. Simple tip for me. I reckon Port just get it done. Yeah. By 37 points. I think there's only real one way to tip in this one. You'd be yeah. a brave man to tip St. Kilda. I'm sure there will be Saints fans who tip them and probably get it right yeah. <laughs> based on the way this season's going. But uh, Port Adelaide... Too hard to tip against them at home. They're going to win by, yeah, 33 points. Yeah. Who's your upset of the round, then? My upset of the round will be uh, probably West Coast, I think. I think it's a winnable game, but uh, I also I think the favourite, the, the odds are heavily in Geelong's favour. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's fair. But, uh, yeah, we could catch the Cats napping. What do you think? I'll go Melbourne. Just 5-0. They haven't lost. Continue the winning run. It's crazy to say to be an upset for a team that's 5-0, but yeah. that's how good Richmond are. Yeah, exactly. I'll back the D's in. And before we finish up, drizzy has got his multi. How did you go last week? One leg failed, Jesse. It was Damn. Sydney versus GWS. Back to Sydney in, and Josh Kelly robbed me of my money. So we're going for a seven legger this week. Just head to head, because you can't do disposals like a week before, which is annoying, because obviously mm. the teams aren't selected. Ah, of course. So, all right, so I've gone Bulldogs beat GWS. Sydney to beat Gold Coast. Brisbane to beat Carlton. Richmond to beat Melbourne, Frio to beat North, Collingwood to beat Essendon, and Port Adelaide to beat St. Kilda. I've put $3 on it, and it's paying $15.46 to the dollar, so $46.39 potential winning. Bring me the money, baby. Get your jeans on, baby. We're going on Metro's. All right, guys, that wraps up our tips for the round. Uh, that is the end of round six. Really appreciate all your support through the year so far. Um, love hearing from you on who you are going to tip this week as well, so let us know in the comments below. Do go check out Drewsy's channel because, like I've said a few times, we do a Drew footy show where we wrap the previous round. So uh, all our opinions are based on comments from you guys. Uh, we'll be on that show so that we always upload at the same time so you can literally just go to his channel now uh, and look at it and check it out as well I'd really appreciate that and go check out my podcast Cold World link in the description and manscaped.com thriving thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next, in the next one. one bye rats